Hey guys, I have a fun design to share with you today. I've been having a great time playing with micro macrame cord um, and check glass beads. So the new cord um, from John Bead is very cool. It is about 0.5 millimeters, which is small enough to get through most standard drill beads. So that is incredibly handy for the kind of designs that I like to do, which is knotting with smaller beads like the check glass beads and even seed beads. You can get seed beads on here um, all the way down to like size 10 check. I've been able to get those to work. So this is really fun. Um, and then also at Michael's is the new check glass bead strands. And one of my favorites is uh, what I'm using today in our project. And so what I made is a beautiful hitch knot and square knot combination to make the beads kind of look like they're framed in the thread. It's a really pretty look. It has a sliding closure and a little decorative seed beads at the end so that you can put it on and off really easily. Something to hold on to, right? And this is just the coolest little thing. Um, I've made it in a few colors. I made it all natural version, which is really beautiful next to these beads. But then I made another version for this video that shows black cord with the natural cord. And I thought that was easier to see. And also just has the added bonus of pulling out the black from those table cuts. So this came out really pretty. I hope you'll enjoy it. Um, it's a pretty long project. So there's lots of jumps ahead. So that's why it's uh, kind of better as a video than as a live class. But as always, if you have questions, you can reach out to us. Um, be sure to find, um, our blog here, blog.johnb.com. That's a great way to reach us and join our Facebook group. And uh, I'll remind you at the end, but uh, I hope you enjoy our video. So here on the mat, I have my strand of beads and we'll be using all but the end two. You can use those if you'd like, but I actually saved them and made a pair of earrings to go with my bracelet. Um, but if you need the length, then you've got the extra two to give you that length. And you can also do extra square knots to add length. So we'll show all of that here in just a second. The additional materials you'll need are something to cut your cord with. So some scissors and a binder clip and a clipboard. Um, the clipboard is just a regular, um, you know, standard clipboard. And I use the binder clip at the bottom to secure the bottom of the strand. And I use the built-in clip at the top of the clipboard for the top of my strand. Um, and then this is a... Um, brand new cord. It is very cool. It has uh, a waxed finish on it. It is very thin, about 0.5 millimeters or so, and you can easily get it through check glass beads. So everything from your table cuts to um, fire polish bead, really handy. If it helps, you can firm up the end by putting a little glue on it, but I find I don't even need to do that. I'm able to get my beads on without really putting a whole lot of effort. So Step one of this project is to cut a length of cord, you know, about 14 inches. Give yourself a little extra. You'll end up trimming it, but it helps to have that length later for when you're working. So go ahead and cut that. And you'll want to secure one end at the top. And you can do that by just going under your clipboard. And then I'm going to string all the beads that I want to use for my bracelet. So again, for me, that's going to be two of the table cut rectangles. And then I'm going to go ahead and string the rest of this strand, which is everything but the two edge table cuts. And I'm just stringing it in the exact order that you see it here. All right, so here's all my beads strung. And I'm going to take the end of that long strand, or about 14 inches again, um, strand that we cut earlier and strung all the beads onto. It's clipped at the top of the clipboard. I'm going to use this bottom clip here that is just a regular good old binder clip. And I'm going to just clip this to the bottom. One way to do it is to just kind of fold it over and use your hand on the underside to just keep that pressure on it while you apply the clip. The clip's really strong, so it's going to hold pretty good. You can bend one end under so it sits flat on your workspace. I usually leave the other one facing down so that I have maneuverability at the bottom. And then I'm going to take all these beads here and just slide them down. I'm sliding them down, they're sitting on top of that binder clip. Okay, so let's focus at the top right now. 
Um, and so what I've got going on here is I'm going to do some square knots, just regular good old square knots. I'm going to cut another length of cord, and this length is going to be um, a good wingspan, so about 60 inches. So about that much. And bring it underneath the cord that's here. Find the midpoint by bringing the ends of that strand together and just pull up from the from the uh, strand. You'll get you'll get something like that and go ahead and just secure that with your hand. So now we know this is the midpoint of our long strand and we're going to start to do a square knot. So if square knots are new to you. They're basically a series of making a four and making peas. So here's a four. Remember this this is running underneath this cord here and we're going to bring the new strand over it. Pull that in place. Take the other side, bring it over the one we just made into a four, right? So it's over that one. And then we're going to go underneath the main strand, which is the one the beads are on, and up through that loop. And then pull tight. And when you do that, you get a the first part of a square knot. It is slidable, so we can move it around. So there's that side. Now, once you've done the first part of your square knot, let me bring it a little closer so you can see it. You'll want to reverse direction every time if you'd like to keep the square knot flat. Um, and so I did my number four this way. So I'm going to do a P in this direction, a P shape. And again, that cord's passing over the top of that one. So here's the other side, just this one over here. Bring that one over this one and then under the main. Guide it up and then bring it up from underneath this loop right here, the P loop. And tighten that. So there's a complete square knot. And what you're seeing here is a complete knot because it's had a four and a P. And so for the rest of the length that I want to do this for, which is about an inch, I'm going to keep doing that. Make a four. And this cord's a little sticky and that's a good thing because it makes it hold its knots. Sure, you'll appreciate as you start working with it. So there's the four. It passes over the cord. And now I'm bringing this other side right here. I'm bringing it over this one and under this one. It's really long right now, so a lot of this is happening kind of over here, but I'll try to get it a little closer on this next one. And each time you can both slide this along the main strand and you can tighten it. So that was our four, so let's do a P. There's the P shape. Again, we're passing over the main, and we'll take the other cord, bring it over that side, passing over here, and bring it under the main cord, and up through the P from underneath. And what I like to do is kind of hold everything in place as I'm making these long pulls. It's in the beginning when you have this really long strand. It can really be helpful. So let's keep doing that for about an inch. All right, so now I've got about an inch of square knots. I'm just gonna hold this up a little closer. You can see what I've got going on there. And that inch of square knots is just a regular on one strand um, of cord. And I'm going to go ahead and slide up a bead now. So here's our first um, table cut bead. And I'm gonna form four square knots underneath it. And as I do that, I'm going to try to help the cords pass behind the stone. Um, and on a table cut bead, that um, does not naturally always happen on a flat surface like a square. Um, although on a round bead, it would happen great. Just on this one, we're going to have to help it a little bit. So just start in that first square knot and see how it starts to kind of go top bottom. I'm just going to help this strand go underneath it. Just kind of push it under. And then don't go too crazy making this first part of the knot tight because you don't want to cinch it. So just pull it gently and then complete the rest of that first square knot. And what you'll get is that first little knot underneath there. 
So let's do that one more time. There's one more. So over this chord, under this one, that's the four. And here's the P. And I'm ready. Okay. So there's bead one. Slide up the next one, do the same thing over again. Again, we're gonna have to help it so that it sits. And also, um, I didn't mention before, but this is our four right here, coming over the bead. Here's this other chord passing over that side of that one and going underneath. Underneath the main and then under here as well. And we pull tight. Bring this next over. And we'll bring this next one over. Finishing the other side of that square knot. Take one more. So this is all um, really not, not too tight of tension. Because we don't want to warp the position of those table cut beads on the cord. There we go. All right, so here's what they look like. Put those both on there. And now we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to, I'm going to switch to a different color just for clarity um, so it can really stand out against the other chord because we're going to do um, another set of knots that's called a hitch knot. And we're going to use this chord as our base for the new hitch knot. And so we're going to bring this chord onto the strand just above this bead. And then we're going to do hitch knots out and join them at the bottom around that bead. So for the next strand of cords you're gonna cut, do another, this one needs to be a little longer, maybe about 80 inches or so. That is probably gonna be a little more than you need, but extra is good in this case, because if you um, don't have enough, you can add, but it it's easier not to. So I've got roughly 80 inches of this one, and we're gonna kind of do what we did before. We're gonna find the midpoint by bringing the strands together. Bring the strand underneath the main, and again, the main is the one that our beads are on. And we'll bring those ends together, find that midpoint, and pull up. Just trying to keep it on top of the bead. Okay, go ahead and do one side of your knot. So we'll do a square knot here just to secure it into the position where we want it. at its midpoint. And then slide that bead up and go ahead and cinch that a little bit. So, so far we've just added another strand. And I just did half of a square knot. I just wanted it secured there. All right, here's what we're gonna do. For, for this side, we're just gonna leave one side alone and work on the other side at a time. You can use an additional binder clip over here to keep it out of your way if you want. On this side, um, we're going to be working with mainly with the um, natural cord, and this is our base. And it's it's up to you if you want to secure it to the side. So here's the cord that we've got for this side of it. So to start a hitch knot, what you want to do is bring the cord into like a little loop shape like that, and bring it underneath. So you're looking to do a little loop shape underneath the cord. And then you can secure it with your hand if, you, if that helps. Find the other end. This is the end of that same strand, so this is just coming all the way down. This is the end of that. We're going to bring it over the main and then up through the loop. And that starts our first half of the hitch knot. I'm just going to tighten this up and then pull. So there's our first half. So now what you want to do is almost the same thing, but we're going to change the, the, the layer. So the second half of, of a hitch knot, you remember we were under the cord and we came from under it and around and over and up the loop. 
We're still going to make a loop this time. Our loop is going to pass over the cord. Remember before it was passing under it, but right now we're going to pass over it. And then I'm going to go under the cord, not through the loop. So it's either under, over, over, under. And just keep doing that. Okay, and so if it's getting to be um, a little wonky, you can slide it. So this one, it's got a, a really big gap here between, you want it right up against that edge. So just go ahead and slide it so that it sits there. And we'll continue making hitch knots. You're gonna need four or five knots to go around this fire polish bead, which is about an eight millimeter fire polish. So let's do one more set of knots. So bring the cord. We're starting a new set of uh, another hitch knots. So we're going under the cord for that first loop. Okay. Getting that loop to form. We'll pass over the cord and up through the loop. Again, I'm just keeping all this tight over here with my other hand. it up so you can see it. There's one half. And don't worry if this slides around. You don't need it in spot just yet. And then bring the other cord. Again, we're going to go same motion, but we're going to do it in a different layer. So where it's going to go over and then underneath and up through the loop. And again, I'm just gonna slide it closer. So every time you do that, you will get a hitch knot on this cord. I went ahead and got a few more binder clips. Usually I hold it, but because I'm lifting it a lot so you guys can see, I'm gonna go ahead and clip it to the side. So this is the one I'm, I'm doing my knots on. I'm gonna go ahead and clip that. There we go. Okay. So again, I'm just going to finish doing about five hitch knots on this strand. So here's going under the cord. Keep that loop there. And then over the cord at the end, up through the loop. Slide that over. Here's a cover then. Under the cord. Slide that over. And so we'll just keep repeating that until we have five complete knots. And the way to count your knots in case you lose count or have to um, you know, stop and your work and come back to it is to count the number of hats. And let me hold this up close and show you in just a second. But you want to count the number of little, little tops. So let's see, I can get this out of the way a little bit so you can see it. This is all slidable. So you can, you can move it around. You can make it cinch up more or spread out more. But each of those little tops is a hat. So, so far I have three. This last one's a little loose looking, but I have to pull it a little tighter. They tighten up the former every time you add a new one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with this cord on this side, and then I'm gonna do the same thing over on this side. So there's the five hats on that side. Starting this one, again, I'm just bringing that cord underneath and making a P loop, right? And then coming up through that loop over the, this cord right here is going to go over this one because the loop is under it, right? Coming up through here. Pull tight. And then pass over it. And then come up underneath the cord and through the loop. Okay, here's 
going under it again. So that first pass is going under, and the second pass you're going to see going over and up through the loop. And we pull tight. And then this next one, of course, is going to go over it and then under. We need to go under and then over. So it goes pretty quick. There's our, so far we've got three hats. Let's just do two more. All right, there we go. So there's five on each side. And again, you can you can squish them and make them cinch in more, and you can spread them out. So let's get the bead up there and see what we need. I think kind of just like an even an even look is what I did on the uh, the original. And because I'm using the black cord, you're seeing the the spaces more than you would if you were matching the cord colors. So just keep that in mind for you know the slightly different look we're getting. So here's the bead. I'm bringing the bead up. I'm gonna go ahead and need, I need to free these two from the binder clips that I've got here on the side. So let's do that. Okay. So we've got all, all of this all together now. We're going to just take these all together and bring them into a good old square knot underneath this bead. And I'm going to work this square knot with bull strands. So there's my four. Here's the other side of the cord. That's this side right here. We're bringing that over these, under the main, and then up through the loop. So it's the same thing we're doing before up here, but we're just doing it with two cords now. And it makes it a little trickier because one of the things you have to kind of do is keep them even as they're coming through and knotting together. You can individually tighten each strand. Okay, let's do the other side of our square knot. Let's bring this over like that. And we'll bring this one over like this. Over those. And I use, I kind of, to feed them underneath, what I do is I, I make a point like this now and feed them underneath and then pull. Again, I'm holding everything steady. And right before I tighten this part, let's make sure this is how we want it and then go ahead and do this part. And if it helps to pull each strand individually, there's the possibility of doing that, just to get the tightness you want. So there's the first one. Slide up a new one. And now we're going to do, remember we did five here? We're gonna do eight to get around this one. So we're gonna make eight hats. And the same thing again, wanna free the natural color cord, have that be loose up here on both sides um or at least to start you can you can clip one side completely so i'm gonna i tend to work the right side first i'm gonna clip this side down and then i'm gonna take this side it was a little tighter than i should have done it okay. and clip this side I'm gonna flip these under so that my cord will lay flat. This one, this uh, natural colored cord here, it's still loose for me so that I can make those hitch knots. And again, I'm gonna make eight of them this time. So bringing that cord under, up and over, through the loop, and pull. Make sure that sits right next to the bead. This can move around for now, we're not worried about it. Let's get eight on this side, eight on this side, and then we'll do the double square knots underneath this one next. So here we go, we've got eight on each side. I'm just counting the hats on there. And so I'll release my cords from either side of the clipboard. I'm doing that. 
Um, and so I'm going to bring that over in before, bring this side over those cords, right? So all of these are going over the ones on this side. And then I'm going to bring these, and it's handy if you just kind of take, take the cords together and just make a little loop that becomes your thing that you push through. So again, I'm passing over these under the main and then up through the loop we made, the little four loop on the other side. You can help to hold all that stuff steady as you pull through. And here we go. So this first knot is always a little trickier than the rest because we're trying to manage four chords. You can pull them individually as needed, but what we're going for is that. You can see they're gonna sit there and hug the bead like that. And it's just really starting to take shape. That was my first side of my square knot. There's my second side. There's the P. Just keeping the cords together as much as I can. And I'll show you right before we tighten it, another little way to make sure everything's tight. Here's me coming up underneath with the other side. And right before we do this, this tightening part, go ahead and just get those as you'd like them and then bring that to meet it. Now we can repeat that. There's four of these cords, again, passing over the main. Here's the other side. We're gonna have it pass over those cords. And then again, what I do is I just kind of pinch them like that so I can get that underneath the main and up through the loop. And once I get them on that side, just pull through. And tighten that up. Let's finish our square knot. This side. This side here, passing over. Coming under the main, up through the loop on the other side. Second set of square knots, all done. So that in a nutshell is how this bracelet was made. What I'm gonna do from here is repeat everything that I showed above for the next five beads. So again, I'll bring this bead up and then secure each of these cords um, to the side of the clipboard and then use this cord to start doing hitch knots on either side. And again, it's five hitch knots or five hats if you're counting hats for the fire polish bead and you'll need about eight for the larger ones. When you get that all done, and we're down to here, we'll just repeat square knots with just the main uh, colored cord. And I'll show, I'll show the transitioning back from having four down to having just two um, after we finish the last group of hitch knots on that bead. All right, so I finished doing the um, knots, the hitch knots around each of those beads. In, in the same way. And I wanted to share a few things, thoughts that I had as I was working on that. Um, one of the things I noticed is that uh, as I worked, my knots got more confident and tighter. And so as I got down here, I found that I, I needed to maybe do nine, even though I could slide it, it just looked a little fuller because of the way that um, each knot before it kind of stays in that same um, amount of length of thread, right? So uh, it's, it's, you can cinch it so much, but it, looked better to me to have nine around this bead in this case. So um, I ended up doing that just on this one. The rest of them still have eight. So that's something um, I thought of mentioning in case your tension is different. You may need to play with those counts just a little bit in addition to sliding them around. But there you go. Now I'm at my last bead. I've got the five on there and I'm about to do the last little set of square knots with both of my strands. So same thing, just bringing that around in a, in a number four on this side and then bringing this cord over and then doing that little trick I do that kind of makes it into a needle, right? I kind of fold it so that I can get it underneath the cord, under the main, and up through the hoop a little easier. So there's that first set. Here's the P for finishing that square knot. Again, I'm making my little loop here to go under. And Finish that knot. And let's form another square knot set. There's my little loop under. And 
and then I'll need this side to come over. Okay, so there is the last set of square knots that's on there. And that looks really cool with the two colors. You might want to try that. One other thought I had about the two, the two colors is you might be wondering, how can I tell my cords apart? Meaning the one that I started to make the hitch knots with, so for us, the natural cord, and the initial one. For us, the, that's the black cord that was starting the first square knots. Well, the, the, the um, cord that you started here will be shorter than the one you started here um, to start making your hitch knots with. But as you start making hitch knots all the way down, all the way down, you consume that really fast. And you may find that that switches as you get to the bottom and your shorter cord is now the one you were using to make your hitch knots. So you still, but that's good because you want to have more, more of this to finish the end, right? So that's what, that's what will happen. If you're working with the same color, it'll be hard to tell them apart. Now this will still work even if you work with the wrong cord, meaning you switch them. Um, and you're working with the same color, it's still going to work. Uh, but th the best way to tell is as you're working here, obviously it's going to be the really long one. And as you start to come down and it gets shorter and shorter, eventually when you get to the end, your longer one will be the one you started with up here, right? So now what we need to do here is we need to terminate the cord that we were using for hitch knots. So that would be the cord that you cut that was like 80 inches when we added here. All right, so let's get some flush cutters. And I'm going to, I'm using flush cutters in this case because I can get really close. Scissors are fine too. But I want to go ahead and just trim. Leave a smidge on there if you're going to burn because you want something to be able to flatten down. Careful not to cut your other cord. I'm going to do one at a time. So you see where I cut that one? Now there's two things you can do. You can use some fabric glue. You can use some Hypo Smith, which has a precision tip on it, like that, that you can apply. If you do that, um, that'll work fine, or you can burn it. And so I've got a cord end burner here. And I'm gonna get really close. Try to get all your other cords out of the way. Let's get really close to it if we can. Get that to heat up. Start to melt it. As it melts, do this motion to flatten it get it to sit like that. So let's do the same thing for the other one. Leaving a little bit on there so I have something that will kind of you know mushroom and melt. Just what I want it to do. And there we go. So that side's glued down. All right. From here, we're just going to go ahead and bring up our next rectangle bead. And we're gonna make two complete sets of square knots underneath it, same as we did above. So there's my first one. Same thing as before, we're gonna need to help those cords go underneath the bead. There's my first set. And that was gentle tension on that first one. The second one, you can be a little tighter. But again, you don't want to make it too, you know, um, too, too much cinching on the cord. It'll make it kind of warp a little bit. All right, there we go. I'm gonna repeat that one more time with, over this bead. And so I finished that next bead. And what I'm gonna do from here is this is the bottom. I'm gonna match here what I did up here. All right, so there's about half an inch. So here it is off the board. And what I'm gonna do is bring bring it into a, like a round shape. So bring it into a circle like this with its main, the main cord. And bring those together like that. And you can clip them if that's helpful. I kind of go back and forth on whether or not 
it's helpful, but what we're basically going to do is we're going to take these same square knot cords that we were working with before, and we're going to square knot over both sides now. So we're square, square knotting over the one we were working with before, but we've brought the other end up and over like that, and we're going to square knot on top of all, of all of it, right? So try to... I'm going to do this. I'm going to hold it like that. And I'm going to go ahead and pinch just this end down here. Get those to stay together. It's a little tricky. There we go. And now I can start square knotting here. So let's see where I left off of my last hat is on that side. So we're going to go number four, and pass over and under. And we're gonna go over the cord we made the four with and then under the main and up through that loop. And then we pull tight. So you see what's happening here is it's, it's knotting on itself. Once you've done that, you can probably remove this. It's, um, it's gonna wiggle on you and every time you're probably gonna wanna tighten it. That's usually what I do, but I do tend to do this off board and without really any real security because it it's just really hard to secure it at this point. But you can do it. So there's the other side of my score knot. And what you can do every time if you want is just pull here, pull here. We're just keeping it tight like that, right? So let's go this way. And do this for about half an inch and what you will find is the half an inch here will match the inch we left at the beginning so you'll have that symmetry and additionally you have both knots sorry both cords secured under that last half inch of square knot and then we'll finish the ends and we'll be done all right here i'm doing my last set of square knot here's my last little set here that one Here's this one. Here we go. So what you'll see is the bracelet will be worn like that, right, around the wrist. And to tighten it, you would just pull. And to loosen it, you just pull it apart. We need to secure these so they don't come loose from this. So you can just do a couple of things. You can put a little seed bead on it. You can um, just do a couple of double knots. All of those are great ideas. I, I like this cord for uh, a lot of reasons. The knots are very, very precise and, and cool looking and it sticks um, when you knot them. But um, another really good thing is you can get a seed bead on here. So because we can, why don't we go ahead and do that? I'm going to grab some size eight seed beads and dangle them and then we'll do a little knot here on each of these ends. All right, I was gonna use size eight, but then I found these and I thought they were the perfect match. These come from one of our check three packs. And so I'm gonna put like two or three on each end of, of these and see how that looks. Let's give it a try. Okay, so here's one of those. And then just bringing it over, over itself in a loop like this, and up through the loop. Oops, sorry. Again, here's the one I put the seed beads on. And let's just make a loop like that. And come back up through it. I'm gonna try to keep it close to the end if I can. I'm gonna put another knot right on top of that one. looks pretty good. All right, so I've got seed beads on each of those ends. And again, these are the ends that you use to adjust it closed and open. We still need to deal with the rest of the cord we were doing our square knots with. And for that, I'm just going to do the same thing we did before with the other cord we terminated. I'm going to trim it and burn the ends. And then we'll be all done with our bracelet. So there they are. We did a burn and a trim on those ends, and our bracelet is ready to wear.
hope you enjoyed this video and that you have gotten started on your bracelet and I uh, hope you will love it. And again, if you have questions, you can find us. Um, best way to find us is to go to our blog and all of our links are there to how to learn more about what John Bede has coming up and any um, new classes that we offer. There's probably going to be a lot more like this coming up in the future because this chord is just so fun to play with. So you can expect to see more projects from us. And until next time, happy beating. Today's forecast, a lot of sunshine, blue skies, marine clouds. Just a perfect day to go outside and relax. That's your forecast. We'll be right back. Yeah, sunny day.